The tavern door slams open, admitting a wretched waterlogged sailor, his eyes glassy with both trauma and fear. As he staggers to the bar, patrons recognize him as the first mate of the Perseverance, a merchant ship thought long lost. Amidst startled cries, the sailor begins rambling, speaking into the air above him. Captain Aramor, please forgive me. <laughs> Gasps make the rounds of veteran sailors at mention of a captain now three years lost at sea. The dark fog, it rose up without warning. We, we know the tales, we, we made full sail, but it was upon us with unnatural speed, not of this world. And then I saw his unholy eyes and that grin, terrible. Visions befell the crew, voices whispering lost hope, eternal terrors. Then it, it consumed us, it consumed us. It was the dread mist. His voice fails as he collapses into waiting arms. The tavern falls deadly silent. Worried gazes turn towards the doorway and the storm brewing outside. Minds full of sudden dread at what haunts their familiar waters. They know the dire legends. The vengeful sea goddess has unchained her dark champion once again from the abyssal depths returned to call souls into her lightless flock. The seaside village of Brinehaven awoke to the cries of gulls and the gentle lap of waves. As the dawn light crested over the harbor, it revealed a young boy named Morvan standing alone at the end of a weathered dock. His bare feet dangled just above the cool water as he gazed out at the morning mist hovering across the still ocean surface. Morvan often slipped away before sunrise to make his way down to these familiar docks. No matter the season or hour, he felt drawn there, called by a voice only he could hear. Even now, at ten winters old, the sea held him transfixed, its hidden depths and drifting currents holding adventures and mysteries he longed to uncover. As Morvan peered through the parting mist, strange visions crept into his mind, as they often did during these moments by the ocean. Dreams and whispers filled his thoughts, fractured images flashing of his commanding terrible storms and raging waves, sinking ships at his will. The visions swirled darker until a cold voice cut through. Morvan Bilger, it crooned. You belong to me. Morvan snapped alert, the visions evaporating like sea foam in the morning light, just the endless gentle waves stretching to the horizon, he told himself. But even years later, he would never forget that first chilling moment. As the winters passed, the visions and whispers that plagued the growing boy increased in both frequency and detail. Vivid were his nightmares of his terrible powers, summoning giant waves, the calling of great tempests, ships lost to the phantom depths. And always that voice, dread in its power, yet reassuring, alluring even, telling of his destiny a glorious but darker purpose. By fifteen winters of age, Morvan could no longer deny something unnatural had fixated upon him. He began dabbling with magic, desperate to understand and control whatever entity was seeking to possess his mind and soul. Morvan awoke with a gasp, his hands clenched around throbbing temples. The ghostly yet irresistible voice from his nightmares still echoed around him, images lingering of ships smashed upon the rocky shores at his command. He rose from his bed with a shudder, seventeen winters now, and the visions only grew more vivid. He crossed the humble room of his seaside shanty to the window overlooking the harbor. The village of Brinehaven looked peaceful in the morning sunlight, showing no signs of the torment plaguing Morvan's mind. Taking some relief that the nightmares remained solely with him, Morvan prepared to meet the day, hoping work around the docks would distract from the dark forces shadowing him. 
The hours passed quickly as Morvan assisted hauling in catches, repairing nets, and performing other harbor duties, all while stealing glances out at the glittering sea. The ocean's pull felt stronger every day. That evening after a modest supper, as Morvan sat watching sunset colors dance across the bay's rippling surface, an unnatural cold suddenly swept through his body. He shuddered violently and clutched his chest. Then Morvan heard it clearer than ever. Finally, an answer, a revelation. The sea goddess Umberly whispered his name directly before appearing as an ethereal visage hovering over the darkening waters. The time has come, my champion, she proclaimed. Serve me, and I shall gift you power over sea and storm, to use as you will in my name. Dark arcane energies coursed through his veins as sinister gifts of power unlocked at Umberly's very words. Morvan's eyes set ablaze with a tempest of storms, and his hands manifested gusts of wind at but a mere thought. He felt the dark powers rise within him, but at what cost? Morvan reeled, his mind racing, trying to grasp this reality. Unrivaled power of sea and storm, to not only live upon the seas, but control them? It was everything he had dreamed. But why me? Morvan questioned, even as Umberly's alluring promises found their mark upon his soul. Out of all people, why choose to bless me with such divine power? The shimmering aspect of the sea goddess glided closer to Morvan, her misty lips curling into a sinister grin. <laughs> I see the tide swell within you, Morvan. You remind me of another from many seasons past. Your grandfather, Gellim. Morvan's eyes widened. My grandfather? The old sailor spun many fantastical tales. Voyages, adventures, treacherous faraway seas, but they were always shrouded in doubt and old man embellishing his youth. They were true? Umberly smirked. Yes, Gellim served me for a brief time. I blessed him with good fortune and insight, and offered him powers beyond his imagination. Her tone turned bitter. But he was short-sighted. His loyalty to family and village soon distracted him. He abandoned his destiny, instead squandering his life to retire and die an old man. The dark goddess turned her glare upon Morvin. Gelen rejected my gift of immortality, refused the eternal power and renown I offered. Disgust filled her voice. He foolishly resigned his place among my chosen to grow feeble and gray, surrounded by whining grandchildren. But you, Morvan, you are different. I have watched you over the years. I have witnessed your ambition simmering deep within and I have felt your longing to call my seas your home. Your grandfather lacked conviction, but what of you more than Bilgemin? Will you take command of wind and wave, storm and tempest, or will you follow in your father's footsteps, gutting fish to maintain a paltry existence? Umberly's words called upon a tide of conflicting emotions stirring within Morven. Deep down, he had always been torn about his father's, his family's fortunes. Thomas was a good man, humble and hardworking, but in truth, Morvan had always repressed his embarrassment. Morvan could be so much more. He desired to be respected and feared. To command the profane powers of the sea to serve such a goddess as Umberly upon the seas and oceans of this realm. Umberly's specter glided around him, slowly circling the young man, her voice a cold caress in his ear. I offer what your grandfather tossed away, the ocean's might held in your hands, a force of my will, my vengeance, to punish any who dare trespass my waters without offer. Immortal glory is my champion 
awaits you. She halted before him, pale eyes burning into the depths of Morvan's soul. The darkness is already within you, my champion. Cease fighting it. Serve me. Rule these waves in my name and reshape the mortal world to our desire. Gellin's and even his own father's pathetic existence as a humble fishmonger briefly flashed through Morvan's mind, instantly replaced by visions of ships crushed beneath colossal waves and mighty storms upon the seas, all at his command. His hands trembled not from Umberly's icy touch, but raw intoxication as dark ambition finally uncoiled within him, cold and slippery as a kraken's rising from the lightless depths. He met the sea goddess's hungry gaze with dark purpose flaring in his own, accepting the destiny his grandfather turned away. I pledge myself to you, dread Umberly. I shall finish what Galen could not. Morvan strode along the midnight shores, feeling the ocean's unlimited power coursing through him, this dread gift from the mighty sea goddess. He impatiently waited for the knowing signs foretold as the goddess departed their last encounter, the cryptic guidance, the next step in his ascension to becoming Umber Lee's champion. Mere days passed when, in the early pre-dawn hours of the morning, Morvan awoke with a whisper from Umberly, calling him to the docks. Off in the distance, just as the morning sun began its slow rise over the horizon, an eerie silhouette materialized, contrasting against the new dawn's light, the ghostly outline of a massive ship slowly drifting towards the village docks. The spectral vessel drifted through veils of pre-dawn fog, its warped timber and tattered sails seeming to absorb the swirling mists and radiating a faint, ghastly hue. Gently creaking wood and the faint clanking of iron chains were the only sounds breaking the eerie quiet as it glided inexorably into the dock. Most unnatural was the complete absence of any natural rocking or swaying from the waves themselves, as if the very laws of the sea dared not interfere with the ship's baleful passage. The hull of this otherworldly warship was made from blackened wood, leached of any natural color by the relentless ocean and whatever damned forces bound this ship to the mortal realm. Upon closer inspection, there was little doubt that this hulking galley was formed in a nightmarish amalgamation of dark magics rather than built by any mortal hands. Here and there, remnants of past battles peeked through, layers of salt, algae, and haze, shattered spear shafts protruding from the railings, deep scars along its bulkhead, a rusted helmet impaled by a harpoon on the foredeck, and even a pair of skeletal arms forever grasping the helm all evidence that this vessel sought to destroy any who crossed it. The tattered sails seemed formed of a patchwork of canvas and fog-like vapors, billowing full yet perforated by countless holes and tears from many arrows and ballista bolts. Most distinctively, the entire prow took the shape of a dread gaping maw, as if built to consume any ships caught before it, consuming craft and crew alike in its endless abyssal hunger. Morvan noted that this was surely a vessel meant not to simply raid and plunder, but destroy utterly in the name of the tempestuous sea goddess, Umberly. As the would-be champion took in the ship's sinister presence, the phantom voice of Umberly echoed once more in his mind. No longer will you be shackled to the realm of mortals in the mundane, for I offer you passage to the eternal. Step aboard, my dark champion. Seal your unending bond to me. A crowd of early morning dock workers began forming around the ghostly ship. One in particular attempted to board. As he stepped upon the deck, he began to scream, but before a sound could escape his lips, his form briefly radiated in an eerie green light before disappearing into a void of nothingness. Morvan had no fear. He instantly knew the man's fate. He would forever serve this ship. His ship. 
Racing quickly, Morvan pulled himself over the rail onto the ship's deck. No crew stood waiting, living or dead. Only eerie silence surrounded him, the cold caress of ocean spray and the impenetrable banks of fog. The ship began to depart as horrified dock workers looked on, its tattered sails undulating in an unseen wind. At sea, Umberly coalesced before him, no longer a specter or aspect, shadows clung to her form, broken only by the cruel gleam of her haunting red eyes as she turned them upon Morven. Are you prepared to surpass the failures of your forebearers? Her voice echoed as if from the bottom of the ocean itself. Will you seize true power, immortality, and serve my domain? Morvan stood tall, the ship's unnatural chill settling into his bones. I will not waste this opportunity like those before me, Lady Umberly. I pledge to serve you eternally. Teach me the power to grasp. Teach me to never relent, and I shall serve as your vengeance upon these seas. Umberly's smile held all the warmth and comfort of icy waves and jagged reefs tearing a ship's hull to splinters. The dread goddess held Morvan's gaze. One final step remains. To fully wield my might, you must shed the last chains of your mortality. You must transcend. Her words echoed with sinister finality. As soon as they faded, spectral shapes began to manifest all around Morven. First came anguished, drowned sailors, waterlogged corpses with pleading phantom eyes. They lurched into being along the rails and rigging with rasps and groans of anguish. Next drifted in remnant lost souls, barnacles embedded into their indistinct forms. Behind them skittered moldy skeletons barely held together by rotted sinew and kelp. The last of this unholy and forever crew were wrathful ethereal spirits wearing the remnants of their mortal sailor garb. Furious whispers flowed from their flickering forms. As one, the nightmarish mariners turned to observe Morvan with eyes full of tragedy, rage, and accusation. Their meaning was clear. Embrace on death and forever join this cursed voyage, or flee and remain ever mortal. Morvan peered into the frigid black waters, hungering for his soul, then back to Umberly's pitiless gaze. Despite any doubts he harbored, he knew his course was now set, straight into the goddess's dark will. Gathering every ounce of courage from within, he met Umberly's cold smile with dark purpose. I accept your bargain, my goddess. Make me your champion. Make me undying. Umberly nodded in sinister delight as the ghostly crew converged upon Morvan's form, consuming his mortality into their unholy flock. Morvan expected brief pain, but felt only the icy howling winds that now erupted around him. His form became ethereal as he slipped down through the blackened hull as the cursed blackness of the frigid ocean now embraced him, stealing his breath, the cruel sea pulling him deep down into its lightless depth. Morvan thrashed against the relentless pole, dragging him into the frigid black depth. He steeled himself, believing this anguish would only last moments more before he would suffocate, pass out, or be crushed by the weight of the ocean above him. Yet all the while, his torment was unyielding. Deeper and deeper he sank, the faint glimmer of surface light receding into the cold womb of darkness. Agony flared through Morvan as he inhaled the bitter brine to make quick work of his mortality. He felt consciousness fraying as the ocean crushed in on his mortal form. Yet minutes passed and he was, somehow, still alive. The pain he felt as his lungs burned desperate for air was indescribable. Yet still he was aware, conscious. He tried crying out to Umberly, begging her to halt the icy torment, but no response came. The goddess was silent. Morvan's mortal body came to rest upon the rocky seafloor, still screaming in agony, but unable to move, trapped in the ocean's dark, icy tomb. What little light he could see then vanished to black as the sea's deadly grip collapsed his eyes with a haunting pop. 
He felt every nerve fiber on fire, yet the agony continued, relentless even after his flesh and organs succumbed to the intense pressure. Is this my fated reward? For loyalty? He managed to think in his terror. A seductive offer of power? Only to drown helpless before serving as your champion. He pleaded with Umberly and then Calumvor to detach his soul from what was left of his broken flesh so that he might begin his voyage of damnation to the bleak expanse of the Fugue Plain. It was at this moment that Umberly herself manifested. He could see her even with no eyes. Her elemental body coalesced from the black water in undulating curtains of liquid midnight. Tresses of sable kelp writhed around an almost maternal face gazing down with pitiless expectation. The dark sea goddess reached out a delicately clawed hand to caress Morbin's death-contorted features, trailing an icy glow over what remained of his skin. At her touch, his soul calmed a moment of respite. Her maternal smile slowly turned to cold, calculated reason. Hush now, dear boy. All is not lost, for your agony has purpose. The path to darkness demands a steep toll. She purred into his suffocating mind. To wield my torment, you must know my torment. Such is the cost for immortality's full gifts. <laughs> Foolish boy, did you think this would be easy? Let the cold despair of my domain cradle your soul until it comforts you. A mere century or two of exquisite pain may seem an eternity, but this enduring shroud of darkness shall purge all doubt, reforging you in hate. Only then are you of any use to me. Umberly retracted her razor-edged hand as Morvan convulsed, his lungs now fully flooded with each involuntary breath as the weight of her words found him. As the blackness of oblivion rolled over him once more, she left him with a final echo of proclamation. Drown in darkness and despair, Morvan Bilgeman, for one day you shall arise anew as more vain grimwater. My dark champion, everlasting. Then all went black, left only with the forever sensation of endless torture. Centuries have passed since this tale was first shared, in seaside taverns from the Sword Coast to exotic Zakara. Mariners whisper the name Morvain Grimwater over grog and pipes stuffed with strange foreign tobaccos. They spin yarns of the ruthless undead pirate lich who haunts the Twelve Seas aboard his phantom warship wreathed in unnatural fog. Wise old sailors warn their crews to keep a sharp eye out for that ghostly silhouette, for sighting the dread mist heralds your doom. Some spin tales of a dashing rogue named Morvan who so angered the gods that he was cursed to sell the oceans for all eternity, his humanity long lost. Others insist Morvain bargained away his very soul to command Umberly's impious powers over the seas themselves. Yet the most fanciful fables depict him as the incarnation of ancient Oberiths and primordial Kraken, come to reclaim their watery realms from mortal insolence. But whatever tale is regaled, they each offer the same dread warning. If that black and decayed warship with tattered sails and an eerie glow emerges from the blanketing mist near you, dare not to gaze over long at its profane captain. Avoid drawing the attention of that towering unholy figure upon the forecastle, surrounded by an eldritch glow and orbited by drowned wraiths and skittering skeleton crews. And pray to all the shining gods that the dread mist finds easier prey elsewhere on the trackless blue this day. For if the wicked Morvain Grimwater turns his undying hell lights toward your own, if that foul lich's drowned ears 
catch your panic cries across surging waves, then the icy clutch of the ocean's endless night shall soon shroud you in its forever embrace on behalf of the Bitch Queen herself. So beware and take care near fog at sea, my friend, and always fear the dread mist. And that concludes our tale of Umberley's terrible sea lich. What comes next is up to you and your table. We hope you were entertained or inspired by our homebrew tale. If you'd like to support the channel, please check out the links below. And if you think we earned it, please like and subscribe. Thank you for listening. And until next time, remember what Rich always says, the only limitation at your table is your imagination.